Is this thing on, right? Now? Okay, now. Oh, shit. Really? Ah! Hey, good Farama. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to my show, uh, my channel. What the hell am I fucking doing here? Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to... Uh, <laughs> my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I'm your host, Steve Ricardo. First and foremost, because this is how we do marketing, smash that thumb right there. It'd be awesome. And uh, definitely subscribe. Hit the bell too, and uh, you'll be up to date on all the crap that I'm doing uh, between Ambarola and Heathen Sins and everything else. But this, this video today, this segment, is designed for the top 10 my opinion and other guys that I've spoken to over the years in the industry, the top 10 ways of getting your band to be honed in, to, to, to chisel that beast that you have to get a better pull out of it for live shows. So uh, over the years, I've, I've been in different bands, a lot of bands, and some bands have it, and some musicians have it, and some don't. Some just don't have a fucking clue of what they're doing, and... It's unfortunate because I've got the education, I've got the knowledge behind it. So when I try and tell these guys this thing, they they don't get it. You know, it's like bloop bloop, but they're still gonna drive their fucking car in that direction. Well, if you want to succeed and you want to move forward, these are the top ten ways of doing it. All right, right now, let's do this here. All right, so number one, uno, uh, the biggest thing you can do and the smartest from the get-go is start opening up. When you're ready, start opening up for bands locally, right? Uh, get opening slots, opening slots, opening slots, and then just build and build. Um, at that point, you could pretty much play twice a month, but make sure you're in a different jurisdiction kind of thing, if that makes sense. So I live in Abbotsford, and then from Abbotsford, Vancouver, so I can play Abbotsford this month, and then or this week and then next week I would play Vancouver and then I would play Richmond or then I would play Whistler or I would play Hope. So if you're like Los Angeles or New York, um, distance yourself at least 40K, 50K if you can. Mix it diverse and then just, just that way it gives you an opportunity to play at least twice a month opening up for bands. And mind you, these top 10 will also work for tribute bands, right? So, or any band essentially. That don't matter. But uh, start small. If you start dreaming big, it ain't going to happen, man. If you start going, yeah, I'm going to play the Commodore, and I want to play the fucking Coliseum, start achievable notes because you're nobody. Nobody knows who the hell you are. So start with those notes and then get a repertoire So with those bands. All right? So, yeah, that's number one. All right, number two. So really important is interactive with the crowd. If you just go up there on stage and you start performing and you get your shit done and you, you think it's just going to be and you walk, you're done, you're going to have people like, okay, what's in it for me? So this is a good point to become interactive with the crowd. Um, things like, <laughs> ah, things like don't face the the drummer um and don't talk on stage you know don't have a conversation about something that you guys did yesterday while you're fucking playing and you know you know yeah how's it going yeah fuck i left the oven on shit like that be with the crowd focus on someone who's attentive and watching you and just just watch them you know play and just if they're enjoying the show and you're enjoying the show more, that's even better because that's all the more reason to drag them into what you guys are doing, whether it being your style of country or rock or metal. Just focus and see that person and fuck, I'm going to watch them and just go with it. So yeah, be interactive with the crowd as much as possible. Do it. All right, number three, um, create an image. Uh, establish yourself, kind of like the Jekyll and Hyde thing that I've been practicing to all, you know, what I preach the whole time. Uh, when I get to the show, when I get to the venue, I'm wearing something completely different than I would wear on stage. Um, have that unity with the band members. You know, I wouldn't suggest everybody wearing the fucking band t-shirt. Um, I don't know, it's just a phobia of mine, kind of weird thing. But, uh, you know, one guy, two guy, like, you know, Jason Newstead loved Metallica before he even joined Metallica. So him, he was, he represented that band. He loved that band. So he always wore their t-shirt. Um... But come up with a, um, a, a stick, uh, I'll, you know, something that you can market and that resembles the band in that sort of sense. If you all wear black, you all wear black. If you all wear, you know, plaid, 
whatever it would be. Um, come up with your cool logo, um, get your t-shirts made, um, your logo, uh, banner, right? So just create the image that you want to portray from your package to them that represents you. So when you get to that point, then it's an easier way of marketing, you know, the band logo, uh, stickers, t-shirts, things like that. But, um, yeah. And then find out what you guys, you don't want the drummer wearing flip flops and fucking Hawaiian t-shirt and, um, you know, the guitar player wearing you know, a fedora and a fucking suit and tie. So you got to have at least a little bit of a mesh within the band, right? It always helps. So a good package delivered to the crowd is going to be very helpful. Extremely. For four. And I can't stress this enough is go out and support other bands. Um, the same way you're going to be doing it in the beginning when you start to open up for other bands. Well, how are you going to get to open up for them if they don't know who the hell you are? So go to their shows, go buy their merch, because this is how the tier starts going up the ladder and helping everybody out is by going to the shows, getting those clubs packed, and just voicing of who you are and you know, talk to them, go meet them, go hang with them. They're friends of yours. They live in the same community. They probably went to the same school. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I was guilty of that in the past, but I'm volunteering doing sound. I'm doing, you know, uh, editing work. I'm shooting videos. I'm showing up at shows. Um, and this is a good thing to get your branding going and to form relationships now or even later. You know, if you're a late bloomer and you started playing guitar in your 20s or 30s, uh, or even 50s, go to jam nights, right? Good way to establish yourself and, and meet other people and, you know, kind of take off. But yeah, very important to get out there and hit the groundwork running and just start handing out flyers and all that shit. So, all right, go do it. Number five. All right, very important, very important. I can't stress this enough. Um, don't do the epic long sets. If you're just starting out and you say you're a couple years or even you know, whatever, keep it short. Don't do the 45 minute sets, the one hour sets. You're going to lose their attention of the crowd. Um, if you've got a great fan base and you're already drawing 100 people plus, no problem. Do the 45 minute set, do the one hour set. But if you're starting out and you've only got 20 friends that can come or 10 friends that can come, keep the, sh uh, the sets short. 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 30, you're pushing it. I would stay at the 25 and just under 30. Go in there, fucking just kick ass and then get out, right? It leaves them wanting more and it'll draw attention to you, which is what you want. So quick set, go in, annihilate, walk off stage, winner, winner, all right? Keep it short, keep it simple. All right, number six on this top 10 of what's happening and how to make your band to the next level. So number six is pretty straightforward. Um, just like have sending a demo to a label. You wanna catch the crowd in the first 30 seconds. So don't leave your best songs for the last, you know, end of the night we're gonna do the best song, it's gonna be epic, and you're gonna love it. They're not gonna make it that far. If you don't have the good shit in the beginning of your set, they're gonna go, see ya. And so doing the last, the good stuff last, no, you want to do the, the one that just, you come on stage and gums are blazing and the flames are going and it's explosive and it's just, what the hell are these guys doing? That's what you need. So the first song, or even design a song strictly just to get their attention, right? You don't want to start with a ballad. You don't want to start with kind of a mediocre rock song or, you know, it's a filler song. We'll open with that. No, 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 no. Come in, get the job done. The best song you have the most energy, the one that represents you as a band. That's the one you're going to want to do first. Come in. After that, they'll be hooked on you, and then you can just make that flow. But make the flow good, all right? A little bit of a curvature, or just from there, you know, going. That's what I would do. And that's what hundreds and hundreds of bands have done that have been successful. Just come in and just annihilate first throttle. The band after that's going to go, what the fuck happened there? So, all right, do it. All right, top 10. The top 10, we are at number seven. So this is important as well because people have a short tension span. They might not remember. Any ample opportunity as the lead singer, frontman of the band, to represent the band, do so as much as possible. 
Remind them four times, five times, six times during the set who you are. Nail that name into their heads. You know, we are blah, 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 we are whatever, but just do that on a consecutive basis. Maybe after every song, hey, we are, blah, thank you so much. Next song we're doing is this. But talk to the crowd and let them know. Five times, six times, seven times, ten times in the show. You got a song, you got ten songs, fucking do it every song. Doesn't matter. Remind them who you are and you're there for business because you want them to leave remembering who you are. If they came in and they saw a band and didn't talk the entire night, you know, uh, who are these guys? Then they're going to not want to talk because people want to go there for a reason. They want to be entertained. They want to drink. So remind them who you are. Number eight, people, we're winding down. So this is something that I've seen hundreds and hundreds of times over and over again. As the band finishes and they pack up their shit and either one leaves or they go back to the dressing room and they're there for the rest of the night and they're chilling and they're drinking and they're partying. But what are they not doing? They're not in the crowd talking to people as soon as you've done the show. It's fresh in their minds. They just saw you perform. They're impressed. They're like, wow, these guys are awesome. Automatically. As soon as you have a chance, take a shit off stage and then just start walking around. Do the whole presidential politician handshake. Hey, thanks for coming to the show. You guys like it? Here's a flyer. Hey, here's a sticker. Thanks for coming to the show. Hey, do you know we got merch? Absolutely. What do you guys think of the set? How'd you like it? Hey, I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm Steve. Pleased to meet you. You like Get my point, just get to the crowd because you're fresh in their minds and they would really appreciate you going to talk to them. Uh, it means the world, right? Because this is how you start with a relationship between you and them, your fans, because your fans are important. Without them, you ain't going to get up there, all right? You're just going to be <clears throat> mediocre band, mediocre band. Get out there and talk to people. Win them. Too many times I've seen... Bands, they just, they perform, they're done, and they're gone. And I'm like, cool, I'd like to talk to them, but I guess they've effed off. So, talk to the crowd. As soon as you're done, establish that with them. Do it now. All right, we are got two more, two more. Was this quick enough for you? So, I hope it was. I try to make everything simple to the point without explaining too much because you guys will grasp the concept a lot better. Top 10 ways of making your band better performing live or at a venue all right so number nine number nine so what have i got here i've got uh, practice 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 you're at rehearsal um practice your set list from start to finish what's going to happen when are you going to talk when are you going to do a drum solo when are you going to do a guitar solo what's involved in the set are there special effects in your set are there things you want to address to the, to the crowd during that set write it down and formulate that with the rest of the guys, because that's key. If everybody knows what's going on, you've got a well-oiled machine that's just going to just go and go and go. So know what you're doing ahead of time. Um, like I said, and don't tune on stage. Don't take a longer than one minute break. Um, keep the momentum going. It's really key. So practice those steps at rehearsal. Get your 30-minute set, 25-minute set down to... I mean, a pin drop, done, next one, done, next one. Talk to the crowd, talk to the crowd, next one. Formulate that. There is no right or wrong, but the last thing a crowd member wants to see is someone tuning their guitar or someone adjusting their volume or somebody complaining because it's not right. I've had so many issues over the years playing live, whether my pedal breaks or you know, um, my guitar string breaks. Find a way around it to keep them entertained, whether it's the rest of the guys start doing the set or song until you get everything ready, there's always a way, you know. Completely understand if it's a complete shit show and everything fucking went to hell and your amp blew up and the drummer, you know, put a hole in his fucking kick drum. But at least get everything set down to as much of a clockwork, simplistic the way you can. Go in, annihilate, go out. Uh, and plan it well. Practice, practice, practice. So, all right? There you go. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Ah, number 10. We come to the last one, guys. Okay, so number 10. Um, let's do a little quick cap on what we've got here. So number one, start opening for local bands. Number two, interact with the crowd. Um, don't face the drummer. Okay, number three, uh, create an image, a logo, make a package out of your product. It's a business. Make a package out of it so you go represent it and get it out 
to the masses, right? Uh, number four, uh, go to other shows, tell people about, you know, what you're doing um, and who you are, important. Uh, number five, um, blow them away, right? So, no, actually that was number six. <laughs> you're paying attention, right? So number five was keep your set simple. 25, 30 minutes, 25 would be great. Uh, number six, blow them away. Make sure your first song is the most freaking out of epic this proportion you can. Number seven, we talked about um, why you're doing uh, your set. Tell them who you are. Six, seven, ten times, eleven times. Just keep doing it. Keep doing it. Number eight, use your time wisely after the show. Um, go out, talk to the crowd. Don't just finish the set, pack up, and no. You can talk to the Talk to people who just saw you, right? Important. Number nine, uh, practice your set. Get it down to a well-oiled machine Swiss clock. You got it. And number 10. Number 10. Number 10. So number 10, make posters, make flyers. Yes, you've got social media. Yes, you've got Instagram, you've got Twitter, you've got Facebook. Um, and you've got TikTok, but uh, at the end of the day, if you're living around where you're performing, flyer the neighborhood, go to the local businesses, see if they'll put the poster up for you. Um, people will see it. The more that they see it, to even take out a little ad in, in Facebook. I've done it before. It's actually pretty good. It's not too bad. Um, but go out and hand out flyers. Like I said, go back to the couple of ones at the beginning. Um, hand out the flyers. Go to shows. Hand out flyers. Stand outside the, uh, the the local club. It's got a sold out show and you can't make it in. Stand outside and as they're coming in and going out, just hand them a flyer. The handshake and a flyer. Handshake and a flyer. Guitar pick. Whatever. Uh, just make sure you get some posters out there, some stickers. Get the local area to know who you are. And from there, you build, you build, you build, and then the next one. Because that word of mouth means everything. Posters, flyers, stickers, tattoos, whatever you got. But get out there and start canvassing the neighborhood. If you don't do that, they're not going to know who you are. You know, social media, yeah, you know, wow, look at, look at my Facebook, man. Like 120 people are coming. Take 10% of that. So 120, you get 12. Yeah, 12 people will be coming to your show. So don't rely on Facebook for who can and can't come out. Um, physically pick up a phone. Start texting your friends. Have them come out. Um, Make them like your stuff. <laughs> but no, do what you can. Just flyer and canvas and interact with your fans, interact with the people around you to get you to come to that show. So that is extremely important if you want to build that. So there you go. There's the top 10. Hopefully it's helpful. Take these notes. And um, I think I'm going to make one on Instagram for Instagram and TikTok and how to market your stuff out there. But right now, take these 10. Get out there and uh, start working on your, uh, on your band. All right, hopefully that helps. I've been Steve, you guys have been great. Thank you so much for your patience and watching this uh, video. Subscribe down below and uh, comment down below what you guys wanna see, all right? Cheers, you guys are awesome. See ya, go do it.